All right, guys, welcome to the shop. It was along with any build, you know, you've got to go over the instructions and uh, this is no exception. You've just got to take your time and read things over and make sure you've got all the supplies that you need whenever you start a build. I'll say that the basic tools that I'm going to be using for this are pretty much just some mixing sticks and cups for some epoxy as well as some basic small screwdriver set. Uh, I'm also primarily using my uh, servo tester here. Uh, the servo tester I use to check the deflection, I'm also checking to make sure that the servo is functioning properly, as well as the linkage, making sure the linkage is installed well. I will say that this model comes really, really well assembled. I checked all of the hinge points here and uh, just tugged on the control surfaces, the ailerons, and made sure that the glue was set and there was nothing that, that had insufficient glue. Um, I'm also making sure that the covering looks good as well, and you can always touch those areas up with a heat gun. The parts come out of the package really well packed. Uh, just take your time with the tape, especially the tape that holds things onto the model. If you pull too hard, you can leave little bubbles in the covering film. So just take your time with that uh, masking tape that holds things together. With the retracts, you've really got to be careful in looking at them. Uh, this particular retract was a little bit stuck when I first opened it up, so I added some lubrication. I've got some PTFE lube that just cured that right up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it worked for the most part after cycling the gear, but I think the little bit of lubrication just helps. Just my opinion. Your mileage may vary. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is review the instructions, make sure we know what we're gonna do. We're gonna dry fit everything together and check to make sure that we can hold everything together nice and tight with the clamps we have on hand. Epoxy is really straightforward, guys. You just squeeze some into the cup and do a little mixy-mixy. I do about 30 seconds of mixing before I apply, but I apply to where I need it and experience has shown me just how much I need to do. But once you squeeze it together, any excess that oozes out, you can easily clean up with a paper towel that has some rubbing alcohol on it. Any concentration will work. I personally have 90% in the shop on a regular basis, uh, but if you have like 70% or so, that should work just as well. With the wing set to the side to cure out, I always leave my epoxy out to make sure that I have a reminder that I'm watching a cure. Uh, well, you can test the cup to make sure that it's uh, properly set, but I'm getting parts out here to assemble the empennage. It's important that you flex the control surfaces back and forth and free them up prior to installation. Uh, but there's some other things that you need to do per the instructions, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting the tail gear set and uh, doing some dry fitting. Again, they recommend that the, you do the epoxy if you're going to be doing high-speed stuff. I plan to have this flexible for 4S or 6S operation. So it's not required to do the epoxying, but I wanted to do the dry fit before doing epoxy anyway. Besides... Following the instructions, you make lines on the horizontal stabilizer to remove some of the covering material as well. So that's what I'm doing here. Just make some light score cuts. Don't go too heavy handed. Just make a couple of score cuts at a time. That way you don't cut into the wood deeply. All right, so as you move on to epoxy the tail planes in, 
It's worth noting that the epoxy I'm mixing here, I'm mixing it a little bit longer because I do want it to set pretty quickly. I don't want things to shift, and uh, since this is 15 minute epoxy, I wanted to mix it really, really thoroughly and get, get it going. Uh, but that being said, the tolerances when you install things are really, really well on this airplane. Not too tight, not too loose. So for the most part, it's going to fit just fine. I will note also that there are bolts from the vertical that go through the horizontal stabilizer. And then on the back side, you install some nylock nuts. Now, it's important to tighten these down. Uh, I did not have a nut driver that fit them, so I'm using needle nose pliers. Another tool to have. It would be nice to have the right size nut driver. I just didn't have it. So a quick note also, when you're working with epoxy, it's entirely possible to drip things or smear things onto your work surface. So make sure that you check those areas too when you're cleaning up with some isopropyl alcohol. It, if you clean it up, it, risks, <laughs> it, it takes away the risk, I should say, from getting it on your clothes, getting it on the model, and then you have to wipe it off that, and it just escalates. So take care to clean your work surface as you go. We all make messes. The hardware for the tail gear is really straightforward, just a couple of screws. You reinforce the wood with some thin CA glue. And connecting the control rods for the rudder and the elevator is also very straightforward. Make sure that your servo is centered with your servo tester, and then you adjust the control linkages to install on the the control horns. It's really not hard. You can use one of the uh, Dubro clevis tools that can screw those in and out. It helps save your fingers. And you know, it, there's a lot of different ways and techniques to get these things straight or, or not angled. I just use the edge of a ruler. Some people use paint sticks with clamps. I just use the straight edge of a ruler. It gets you mostly in the ballpark and then you can trim things out. If something is grossly out of trim, you can adjust it mechanically later. All right, so if I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times more. Read the instructions. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. I put the wings on. Oh, wait. No, I don't need to put the wings on. I need to put the cowl on. So I'm speeding through this really fast here because uh, I, I select the wrong screws to put in initially. There are multiple different lengths of screws, so make sure that you measure and check. Uh, I will also say that these screws for the cowl are kind of tricky. It's a little awkward to get them in. Tweezers or needle nose pliers, holding them in place while you use a screwdriver to push in will really, really help you here. It's, it's a one-time job, so just know that if you are strategic and you power through it, it'll just be done in the end. The fit is very snug, uh, so you don't have to worry too much other than just getting the screws where they need to be. Getting the Velcro in is a pretty straightforward affair, but we're also ready to move on to finally getting the wing installed. Pretty straightforward stuff. If you do have a little bit of binding in these nylon bolts, it's standard one quarter 20 thread pitch. So if you need to ream it out or open it up, it's you can easily pick up one of those uh, at your local hardware store. Not a huge deal. Putting the belly pan on, I prefer to use this masking tape method to hold the belly pan in place while I install these screws. There's a few screws on each side of the belly pan, but having it taped in place, ensuring that it doesn't move, means that I'm not going to have to worry about this. They're pretty self-tapping screws, so again, it's really plug and chug work here. Not that complicated. So wrapping up the build here, I'm just tidying up things in the radio compartment, securing my receiver and tidying up some of the wires, figuring out where I want things to lay so that I have room for the battery. 
installing the battery hatch, and then the last step is installing the prop and the prop nut. This is straightforward. There's also a dummy radial that you can install. I decided not to do that on camera just because those can be kind of finicky. It's a sports scale model, so it's kind of optional whether or not you want to fiddle with that. So now comes the fun part where you say hello to my little friend. This is my Hangar 9 P4720 CC that I built a few years ago and covered it with aluminum. It's got a lot of fun details, but because it's also a Hangar 9 aircraft, we can directly compare it to this aircraft and see how well they compare or how well they don't compare. Let's kick things off with the dummy radio. Pretty wagon wheel, vacuum form plastic with this model, but then again, mine was a 3D printed, really highly detailed dummy motor, so that doesn't really track. The landing gear is like all other E-Flight or Hangar 9 airplanes, really smooth operating retracts that are very reliable. Metal trunnion, not likely to break. Really smooth operation, just, I, I can't say much more. There's room up in the nose for a 6S 6000 pack or a 4S 5000 pack. Now don't get me wrong, the decals go on well with the typical Windex application. I prefer putting my decals down wet and they dry just fine. But the comparison to paint over top of the aluminum on my larger version, it just does not compare. It's not really a fair comparison either, but the sport scale model here it just captures the lines very, very well, even though some of the minor details like intercooler doors and oil cooler vents and lights and some other gizmos and gadgets, those things you can overlook them because this airplane is similar. It's a different, different price point. The older 20cc version is a $1,400 price point, and this is at a $400 price point. All right, so at the end of the day, this is a very good sport scale model. This is gonna be a very reliable, good throw in the back of the car, head to the field kind of airplane. You can fly it on 4S or 6S if you change the prop to a 12.8. Uh, but I haven't flown it yet. I've had this airplane for a couple of months now, but I just have not had it. I literally have not had any chance to fly it. Uh, the corn's been tall at the field. It was cut. The weather got bad. The weather is still bad. I have an open day today, but the wind is howling at like 40 miles an hour outside. So until I can get out to the field and directly fly this airplane and compare it to the 20cc P47, this is what you're going to be left with. Just a build video and some of my thoughts and impressions. Um, so take it for what you will. This airplane is still available on the Horizon website. And I encourage you, if you're interested, to head on over and pick one up for yourself. It is very good value for what it is. It's a very well-built airplane. And I've built a lot of airplanes. Um, so... Thanks so much for stopping by the shop. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday and continue working on your flying works of art.